Tucson. It's your old pal, Kim Sunny Burnham. You know me from the weather. Welcome to the Best of Sketch, a collection of T Tucson Sketchy's best material from the past year. And what a year it has been. Whew. Here at Keep Tucson Sketchy, we're feeling a whole lots of different emotions, some bad and some worse. And I'm gonna explain it to you the best way I know how. And that's with a five day weather forecast. Starting off the week, it's Monday, and it's gonna be cloudy with a good chance of loneliness because we've been stuck inside for a whole year with no one to perform for. How am I supposed to work out my inner trauma in public if I don't have a crowd? And no, streaking through the main gate square doesn't count. That is just a hobby. Anywho, on Tuesday, we're going to be getting a gust of creeps heading in from the east because that's when the anxiety is going to set in. You can expect temperatures between the mid 90s and the high 90s in your head after you lick a doorknob while you're fighting off the Walmart welcome lady. The day I start wearing a mask to Walmart is the day I taste food again. That's right. On Wednesday, we're getting ready for a sunny day of paranoia because we've learned anything this year. We have learned one thing, and that is that everybody is disgusting Ugh. and that we should avoid humans at all costs. But you already knew that. On Thursday, who is it looking good? Because we've been feeling really broke. I mean, that's right, dead broke. Like, like I'll meet you in a man's stall in like five minutes. We haven't performed for anybody in a whole year, so we're down to nothing. Like, nothing. But wait, you wait for it because Friday is looking bright and shiny and sunny. That's right. We're hopeful and sunny because we are counting on you. That's right. We're counting on you, the viewer, to help us out. We've been giving you all of this comedy and entertainment for free. But if you could throw us a dollar or two or a hundred, we would love you already more than we already love you. That's right. Money can buy you love. And it's cheaper than you thought. So send us whatever you can right here at the address below. You get your phone and you will download or upload the app and, and then it'll Uber to your Microsoft and then it'll do the Google and then we'll get the money. Yep, okay, on to the show. Keep Tucson Sketchy started way back when Creative Tucson was still a thing. So we actually, we started as a real news show. I was taking acting classes at Pima College. Rich was in the class with me. And he had a post one time saying, hey, we need people to, to come help do this news show. We didn't set up to be a funny show, but we would put sort of little jokes in between the, um, the news headlines. Hello, this is Five on 20 News. My name is Richard Aguirre. And I'm Pedro Santa Cruz. We kind of got bored with the news stuff, you know, the straight news, and you know, nobody was really kind of interested in it anymore. So we, we kind of leaned into the comedy part of it, and uh, we wanted to do like a comedy news show, but like do more of a sort of parody. So that's what became the Scorcher Report. Hello, and thank you for joining us on the Scorcher Report: News that burns. <laughs> They allege that Reagan neglected to update voter registrations when they changed the address on their driver's license. Reagan said that she sent the letters inside of a weekly mailer full of Bed Bath & Beyond coupons. Sources say the flag plans to file a sexual harassment suit against the president. It wasn't something that was like a big, you know, huge deal, but it was something that we were creating together. We were making, we were writing jokes every week. We were filming every week. We were performing. Five people would watch it each week. But it was fun because 
you know, it developed our comedic writing. Um, it made us kind of stick to a deadline. The sun will always come out tomorrow, especially when your delusions call the shots. After my daddy died of due tooth, God bless him, he left me an oil company worth a whole boatload of cash. What kind of boat are we talking? Fake news. Fake, fake news. We had this balloon, it was pumped up, we were all excited, and all of a sudden... After about a year, year and a half, Creative Tucson ends. We understood how great of an opportunity this was to work together and to perform and to do this. And then it just ended, we were just like, what are we gonna do? I think it was Tom that had the idea that he'd love to do like a Tucson SNL. Take the same thing we're doing, we're, we're already meeting once a week to film the news, we're already you know, we already are using, you know, this equipment. We're writing jokes. We know we can write jokes. We know we can come up with funny stuff. We know that there's people that enjoy the, the kind of bullshit humor that we're doing right now. Me, Rich, and Tom got together, uh, met about it, and really kind of like figured out what it would look like. I had seen Rich posted a call out for people to write sketches, and he didn't say it was for a show or anything. So I just thought, you know, Rich wanted to sit around and write some sketch comedy. I joined KTS because I showed up at Cafe Passe one day at 6 p.m. on a Tuesday and everyone was sitting there writing. We were all gathered around and everyone was kind of going around and pitching sketches and it was a lot of people I didn't know. And brainstorming and laughing because everyone is very creative and funny. It was crazy to see that many people show up and be interested in doing what we were doing. And I was really nervous about if I was going to be good enough or if I should stick with it but it ended up being one of the most just welcoming and wonderful communities I've ever been a part of. Um, everybody there made sure that everyone's voice was important and was heard, and no one there was expert, perfect sketch comedy writers either. legislature now to use gerrymandering to basically steal the vote in 2020. It's very concerning. Well, sure, the Dow might be up a few percentage points like since the initial crash, but I think we're really going to feel the strength of the bear market. Hello, sweet bean. Come here. Give me mama hug. Oh, good boy. I don't care if you want to watch Love is Blind. We're watching the Michael Jordan documentary. What to watch? Porn, cartoons, anime. Fresh lettuce. Fresh lettuce. I'm almost finished, honey. Then I'll take out the trash. Into the depths of Mordor, ah, when the Elfin Queen turned warrior princess approaches Mount Doom to destroy the evil lurking, but ah! She's been surrounded by a bevy of orcs and must fight her way, but no! She must retreat! Hey, did you get the mail? Yes. Did you finish the taxes? Yes. Did you clean the cat box? Yes. 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 I love you. I love you. Ah! I love you. Oh, I love you. Hey, I was practicing positive affirmations to myself. But yeah, I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. Hey friends, how's it going? Uh, so, you're like, why should I donate, you know? 
why why donate to this um comedy thing uh well let me tell you why are you happy are you in a good mood or are you in a sour mood maybe if you gave a dollar or gave two dollars or three dollars you'd be in a better mood maybe if you gave like five thousand dollars you'd be in a really great mood i think the more money that you give the better of the mood that you're in if you're in a good mood just give a dollar and then you'll still be in a good mood but if you're in a bad mood maybe give one thousand dollars that's what i'm talking about thanks oh Welcome back! Wasn't that great? I always love a scrappy team that makes it big. They get behind a cause. They unite. Get behind a cause. Refusing to say no. Telling the feds to shove it. Creating a magazine just as important as, as Penthouse. No? Well, wait, that wasn't what we're all watching? That wasn't the movie? What was I watching then? Okay, all right. Well, let's get back to the show so I can catch up. Joel had a connection with, you know, David at Screening Room and said, hey, we could try, you know, try to do something at the Screening Room. We can show videos, we can also do live sketches. We can show the videos while we're getting ready for the next sketch so that there's no lag in time. And we were really blown away at the reception we got from Tucson. I mean, we were expecting that it was a good idea, we liked the idea, but we also weren't expecting the energy. I honestly barely remember the first show. I remember it went well. Um, the first sketch I wrote, I believe, was The Spelling Bee, which actually was the first sketch in the first show. I don't remember the first sketch I wrote. I can think of, off the top of my head, peanut butter on a spoon. See, peanut butter on a spoon works because the peanut protein coefficient viscosity ratio bonds with the crystallization factor in the sugar. I mean, that was me just eating peanut butter out of a jar, so... The first sketch I ever wrote was called Bad Luck Woodchucks. We have been working so hard for this championship. It was about basically a basketball coach who takes superstitions too far. Did everyone do their lucky pregame ritual? It's kind of based off of um, my boyfriend is very superstitious about sports. Like sometimes he can't look at the TV, has to face a certain way. I tied and I retied my shoes seven times, took only left turns to get to the game, and every five minutes I've clapped my hands. All right, okay. <laughs> Man, something just doesn't add up here, ladies. But it was really cool too because we ended up casting all females in the role, and it was really nice to have that representation. All right, let's go one shot. The first sketch I wrote was called uh, You Scratch My Back. It's about a, a guy who uh, makes really weird noise when uh, when something scratches his back. That noise. It made a really loud noise, like a noise. <laughs> I didn't hear anything. I was in that as well. I played the guy making the noise. <laughs>
Hi, people out there. I'm going to come here today to talk about your emotional state. Are you feeling a little emotional? How do you feel? Like, emotion to me is like feeling good, feeling bad, feeling happy, feeling sad. And comedy is come to help your emotions. Get into it. Donate. Right? Welcome back. Well, that was fun learning about the gang's first time on the big stage. Hmm, I'm eating. I remember my first time like it was yesterday. Coincidentally, coinkadink, it was also on stage, although the audience was a very upset dinner party. Mm hmm. But I never got invited back, but I'm sure I made a mark. I made a few marks, actually. Yeah, well, let's check back in with the gang and see what they're doing. So pretty quickly we worked out a good system within the group. We found like we had a lot of chemistry. I think we've gotten better and more efficient at what we do. And I think our chemistry has really grown a lot as well as writers uh, and performers. One sketch is written by one person and then beefed up by six to ten just really funny people who have no egos. Like we're really good about giving each other feedback and making each other's sketches stronger. We all are growing and learning together. It's always really fun bouncing ideas off of each other. Normally what happens is one joke leads to another joke, leads to another joke that leads to the joke that's going to actually be in the sketch. I like to go to the writer's meeting because the process of writing is fun. We're just making each other laugh. I remember sitting back at a meeting and the people that were once new are leading it the same way that myself or Joel would have been leading the meeting. And I think what's been amazing as the show has evolved is people are getting the confidence not only to speak up in meetings, but also to write their own sketches. And a lot of times those are so funny because they add a different voice, they add a different aspect to the show that sometimes we wouldn't get from having just three or four main writers. So I started in stand-up, um, and so I would do all my own material. So it was kind of weird uh, writing something and then having someone else perform it. Uh, and it's just, it's just sort of a weird feeling, but it's a really great weird feeling because uh, if the joke lands, it's like the coolest feeling in the world because you're like, I wrote that. Sometimes we would get so distracted and derailed, we're not even talking about sketches anymore, but it was 100% hilarious, funny, and creative people getting together and making something better than themselves. Welcome to the 2020 NPL World Series of Puttering. It's the only competition where the biggest winners are the biggest losers. With me as always is my trusty color man, Jerry the Fix Fixman. How you feeling, Jerry? You know me, Brent. I'm just excited to witness some world-class time wasting. Indeed. And what a match we have here for you tonight. First up, we've got Randy Tanner. Randy is a customer service trainer at Comcast who has a big presentation due tomorrow morning. I'm curious to see how Randy will ignore the pressure under such a tight deadline. He's avoided hard work this entire season, but there's a chance we might see some fireworks tonight. Mm. Let's hope not, Jerry. Randy's opponent tonight will be Julie Reeves, a DMV clerk from San Antonio, who's on an 11 game puttering streak since she set out to knit a blanket for Christmas 2017. We're closing in on the middle of the season, which is a crucial time for Julie, who missed three Christmas deadlines in a row. 
But who knows, maybe she'll find some early motivation to get next year's gift ready. <laughs> or she could go all the way once again this year and abandon the current design before she even starts. There is always the chance for last minute abandonment followed by a redesign, but it's a risky move. We haven't seen that since Bill Slowman forgot his Blackberry's password back in. So uh, let's get a look at the action as our competitors get ready for their alarms. There's the signal. It's officially 11 a.m. and they're off to not do a goddamn thing. Julie has an overall advantage because she sets her time around sunrise, so this allows her to sleep through her alarm dozens of times before the match even begins. Oh, Julie throws down her needles. And she's now pacing around aimlessly. Here we go, she is a real master of procrastination. Look at that footwork. Oh, and we now have our first refrigerator visit from Randy. I knew that coffee looked a little dark. He has the milk. Where do you think he's going with this, Brent? He's now grabbing two, yes, two eggs. Ooh, you can almost hear the machinery shutting down. Bridge putzing is a common tactic that Randy has been working on in the off season. <laughs> Now got some cottage cheese and what looks to be half a jar of spaghetti sauce. What do you think that's about? Classic fake out. Randy will make a Jersey omelet. And if my 20 years of experience has taught me anything, it's that he'll also take everything out of the refrigerator. Ooh, you think he'll go for a full clean? Anything can happen, but it's a bit early for an entire scrub flood. He risks running out of stalling steam and getting bored enough to actually focus on the presentation. Back to Julie now. It appears she's alphabetizing all of her books, and that is quite a collection. She even has the entire 66 volume Encyclopedia Bulgaria just lying in a pile. You know, Brett, puttering championships are won during moments like these. Look at the quiet lack of reflection. That wool thread could not be further from her mind. It sure couldn't. If Julie Reeves has a specialty, it's ignoring what needs to be done and silently obsessing about how bad it is that she hasn't even started. That's the kind of listlessness that only comes from years of training and untreated clinical depression. Oh, what's this? Oh, it looks like Randy has grabbed hold of the cleaning spray. Uh, he's going for it. Oh, uh, wait. He's taking a pause. He's thinking about something. Wait, we've seen this before. The possible package? Could be the socks you ordered from Amazon. Could be a neighbor. It could be the wing. Oh, it appears it was indeed a false alarm, but Randy has decided to take the moment to pointlessly enjoy the fresh air while he's outside. Smart maneuver. He'll also likely perform a door check two or three times per hour because you never know. And those hinges sound awfully squeaky, don't they, Brent? And while Brent enjoys the sunshine, enjoy this word from our sponsors. <laughs> Want official NPL World Series of Puttering official gear? Visit nplwsp-1.biz and get your limited edition off-collar ill-fitting t-shirt to help root for your favorite putterer. Or not. You could do whatever. Who cares? Money comes and then it goes. You go to the store and you buy a bunch of groceries and then you're taking out the garbage at the same exact time. It's all money. You put money in your car to drive it and then you... Money comes and money goes and it might as well go to a good cause like Keep Tucson Sketchy which is a very good cause that I stand behind. I gave them a million dollars. Okay, I didn't. I'll give them some money. You should give them some money too. It's just money. Hello! Welcome back! Once again, I'm Kim Sunny Burnham, and I'm feeling positively sunny! After seeing the team find their way, it reminds me of the time that 
that I was in the clink back in the old time with my old team. Yeah, back when things were simple. They used to call me Slice because I knew how to use a skiv really good. Yeah. Ah. Uh. Oh, I wonder if KTS team had to take a blood oath too. Huh. I'm going to go find out so that I can become an official member of the team. In the meantime, enjoy the rest of the show. The sketch where I got to throw up on stage. <laughs> That's like a lifelong dream for me. I get a lot of pleasure out of seeing people act out the vision I have in this noggin and just to watch people laugh at the idea that you had about a toilet coming to life and being mad made me so happy. Guess be a guess. He would shit upon my chest. You know, the amazing thing about KTS and sketch comedy in general is seeing your creation happen. Like seeing this like stupid funny idea that you had that, you know, it's just a passing thought and then turning it into this thing that's being performed on stage, it's it's really satisfying. My favorite sketch was the surfer sketch. It was awesome because I, Rory, got to pretend to be Bernard, a dude who was pretending to be a surfer. Tech startups, Silicon Valley Jakes, think they could just drop right into the green room, right, bro? Why are you talking like that, Bernard? I learned the word uh, slam a lama ding dong. Slam a lama ding dong, cookie geezer. <laughs> we had one where we did kind of a play on um, Phoenicians versus Tucsonians, and it was all about kind of McCarthy era, very communism type of parody. And at the end, I'm supposed to run on stage to be like, stop, stop, like this is getting crazy. And I thought it would be really funny if I acted like the run that was on stage left me really out of breath. And at some point, I like flop myself on stage. <laughs> So my favorite role uh, that I was in was a character named Thad in the sketch Action Hero. And he's kind of the archetype 80s action hero, you know, Rambo, whatever. It was a take on the coldness of action hero stars. It's We've just got done in a bit of firefight. And then my dude's over here just cracking jokes about killing people. And I had a split a woman's throat. <laughs> oh. Well. The immortal words of Cat Stevens. First cuts the deepest. Oh. <laughs> you two? That we're supposed to be an elite fighting force here. Your jokes are kind of psychotic. Exactly. <laughs> so we're trying to get him to stop telling jokes, and he keeps trying harder and harder to get us to laugh at his jokes. That that. I think you're enjoying this killing stuff a little too much. It's not cool. Plus, your jokes aren't even funny. You know what? You're right. I'm better than this. Yeah. <laughs> your hot dogs are to die. <laughs> <laughs> As the COVID-19 pandemic shows no signs of slowing, more and more businesses are choosing to keep their employees home in order to stave off the virus. Here's Kate Winslow with more. Oh. 
start waking up There's Folgers in your cup Best part of waking up is Folgers in your cup. Best part of waking up. Best part of waking up is going back to sleep. The best part of waking up. Is crippling on we Best part of waking up Is begging for the end The best part of waking up Is bargaining with God The best part of waking up is finally giving in The best part of waking up Is the sweet release of death Hey, spread some joy! These videos that we're doing are spreading joy! If you gave even a penny, or two pennies, or a dollar, or a dollar fifty, or a two dollar bill, I appreciate it. I probably won't see any of it, but... You will from the Tooth Fairy. But the Tooth Fairy, if I keep losing any more of these teeth... <laughs> you think I should be a preacher? Yeah. Because I know how to ask for the money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Whatever. I don't, what? even, I don't even know why I've said yeah. You want to know what my favorite part of Keep Sun Sketchy is? They don't do a background check. Thanks for giving this gal a second chance. And a third. And a fourth. And probably a fifth by the end of the show. Thank you so much. That reminds me to tell you... Don't forget to help out the show by giving us some of your hard-earned scratch. One dollar, two dollars, a hundred dollars, it doesn't matter because I can't read numbers. <laughs> Either way, these folks work hard to make this stuff and to keep people like me employed and probation off my back. Thanks again. Seriously, back to the show. So we had done four shows in a best of episode and we were just about to come out with our fifth episode and I think it was like around the like March 12th when everything just seemed serious all of a sudden and it seemed like, huh, this might be a thing to worry about. Calls for all non-essential businesses to close throughout the state. He's also asking everyone to stay home whenever they can. We were having, you know, talk about what should we do? How long are we gonna be in this with quarantining? And I think there was a huge push from everybody that it's like, we don't want this to end. And we started having all of our meetings over Zoom and uh, we planned out how we could film all of our sketches safely. We had the idea, well, why don't we just make it about what's happening right now and kind of make it a diary of COVID times and what it was like to live in quarantine. A lot of the uh, sketchy bunch from quarantine is all just, I think, us processing how to deal with the fact that we're still not in person and it's almost been a year. I would 
say that in it any way slowed our momentum for wanting to perform, for wanting to do, I mean, this is our outlet. I would like to think that um, our writing has had to evolve since COVID because we can't be in the same room together. We had to figure out how to film multiple scenes and with multiple characters when we couldn't meet at a filming location. It's, it's a challenge as an actor. When you're in a room by yourself acting, without any other actors to respond to, without any other context, sometimes in front of a green screen. It's time for the wheel of avoiding hard decisions. So you're going to spin a wheel to decide if our children go back to school. No, that is ridiculous. I'm going to spin a wheel to decide who makes the decision. But you're the governor. That's why I'm starting the hashtag not Ducey's fault. We all had to learn pretty quickly how to be our own production crew at home. Like we had to learn about lighting and audio and how to produce and what B-roll was. I am the right woman for the job. Just like I was the right default candidate for Arizona's 2nd Congressional District. I was marginally better than my opponents to a few dozen people out in the mail. Also, I'm a woman who shot airplane guns. Also, actually, that's about it. Captain Kelly, why do you believe you will make a better senator for the people of Arizona than Senator McSally? Well, first of all, I would really like to reiterate what someone so appropriately coughed very loudly moments ago, that my opponent won her seat about as much as I haven't been to space. She was appointed to her seat after losing an election. Oh, you've flown combat missions? Cool. So have I. Have you been to effing space? I think we've done a really good job uh, adjusting to the limitations and putting together full shows and managing to, to work that out. The fact that we've been able to film any sketches during quarantine, during this pandemic, to me is amazing. It's been a challenge, but it's been fun. Sometimes when your back's up against the wall, that's when you can sometimes produce really great work. And I think that's exactly what we were doing. Uh, hey, hey, thanks for joining me guys. Uh, so I know this quarantine hasn't been easy for any of us, but I wanted to meet with all of you to discuss the plans to reopen the Eli economy. Reopen? Are you crazy? We haven't even flattened the curve yet. Are you calling me fat? Cause I am. Everything is unclean. Yesterday I read about a baby who went blind and had a bone attack because of COVID. What's a bone attack? It's like a heart attack. But it's your bones! Yeah, that doesn't sound real. At Bone Doctor 69 on Twitter confirmed it. Who cares? The world would be better off if we all died as babies. Save us from the misery of existence. The baby didn't die. It just like looks weird now. Uh like uh like Cher in the movie Mask. Do you mean Eric Stoltz? Like the kid with the face? No. Okay, well. I guess as long as alcoholic Eli doesn't mess things up, we might be able to get started on... <sighs> Crap. No, no, I don't want any fucking spaghetti, Mom! What? Wait, whoa. Wait, who are you guys? Wait, why am I at the library? You... think you're at a public library? What? Ew, no. A school library. That's where I take all my naps. And I have my poops. <laughs> Okay, well, now that you're all here, uh, I think we should discuss our plans to reopen the- Oh shit, depression Eli, what's up man? Oh, I'm seeing you in like, like 40 minutes. Oh, hey, yeah, it's been too long or whatever. Oh man, dude, depressed Eli, I go way back, like, Oh man, once that butt fucker gets me going, there's no telling what I might do. <laughs> yeah. And your antics hope fill the void. There's the yawning chasm of sorrow that lives in my chest that tortures my soul every waking minute. I find alcoholic Eli oddly soothing. And 
Who are you again? Seriously? We used to hang out like literally all the time. You're not with Ditch Depression, Eli? We'd watch Archer until like 4 a.m. on weeknights? <laughs> <laughs> Remember when we ended up making Eli throw up in the bed and then he had a panic attack so bad he had to go to the ER? This was like fall 2013? Uh, yeah, that was actually a really terrible time for all of us. <sighs> Speak for yourself, nerd. That was my goddamn heyday. Before all that gas therapy and shit. You can't call things gay as an insult like that, alcoholic Eli. Not cool. Yeah, that type of bigotry is unacceptable. We aren't in the backwards times of 2011 anymore. Oh, my bad. Sorry, anxiety, dude. I just have no clue who you are, man. 2010, 2013 were like my blackout days, my man. So, I mean, but hey, it sounds like it was a lot of fun. It was terrible. Truly my best work to date. Okay, can we please finally talk about our plans to reopen the Eli economy? <clears throat> no. No. It's way too soon. Fine, can we maybe revisit it in a month and like see how we feel then? Whatever. <laughs> I'm afraid of restaurants. There's so many butter knives. Oh, don't even get me started on spoons. Okay then, well, that was completely unproductive, so thanks a lot for the help, morons. You know, we're all in Eli together, you get that, right? Uh. Whatever, jerks. How do I end this stupid meeting? I'm gonna go joylessly rewatch Tiger King for the fourth time. Don't bother me for the next five hours and 17 minutes. Ooh, did you know that tigers are actually susceptible to the novel Corona? <laughs> So, um, here's a little thing. We're giving you laughter, I think. And then what you have to do is give to us. That's your job. You need to give and we'll give you some laughter. That's how that works. You have to give to receive. So you give us, say you give us, say you give us $30,000, okay? You can expect not one of us, but somebody somewhere will give you maybe $60,000. Okay. Maybe you won't get anything back, but hey, you'll feel good. You know, you supported local entertainment. You did it. Welcome back, audience. Say, did you hear about this COVID they're talking about? Is that why no one has been around? And why I haven't tasted food in six months? And why everyone is wearing these muzzles masks? I thought we were just in a state of anarchy. So that's why the cops showed up after I set the check cashing place on fire. Welp. Live and learn, right? I guess I'll have to wait a little longer for society to collapse. Back to the show. It's very introspective. Um, comedy, you know, can be sometimes the most personal and also most detached thing. But I feel like with stand-up, I just wasn't really finding a sense of community with the writing aspect. And so KTS has been wonderful in that sense. I mean, there's so many different groups in town performing. You know, there's there's theater groups who are, you know, doing theater. There's comedians who are creating great comedy around around Tucson. There's writers who are writing great things, and and, and filmmakers too. And we we were able to even from episode one get all those types of people, you know colliding with their creativity. Everyone brings something unique and different to the table and, it's, and it gets stirred up in a pot and it's a delicious soup when it's done. Our last question comes from... Beelzebub! Oh God, he's come to collect on our deal! Okay, no, no, it's, it's from Jake. This question comes from Jake. Keep Tucson Sketchy really brings 
everyone into the picture and tries to find like a democratic way to make our content. You have so many talented individuals who are able to collaborate and work as a team, who are able to take their different backgrounds, their different perspectives, their different experiences. You can be heard and what you're passionate about can be respected and incorporated. KTS Music presents Christmas songs for the apocalypse. Where you spin when falling down, your head is straight for my hometown. That everyone feels like they own some of it. And that's really, that's when things work the best when you feel like you own it, because it's not like we're making any money off this, so. Someone who has like a certain sense of humor and is very prolific with writing can really have a big impact on like the entire episode that they partake in. Her second post, sick of bestie selfies. <laughs> My makeup, it's runny! Oh, like your life is that interesting. You might work for years as an actor and and never get the your ideal role, the role that you want to play. But in Keep Two Sun Sketchy, you can write your ideal role. Sometimes I like to write sketches just because there's one moment that I really want to see happen. Ghoul on the Stool takes out its revenge Christmas night, showing the whole family the true meaning of Christmas in 2020. And did we mention Ghoul on the Stool is made of 100% toxic materials? May cause drowsiness for the whole family. It's like, wow, I can't believe that I got to be on a team that made something this good. Like, this feels like we're doing something. Like, we should be making a lot more money. <laughs> we should be making a lot of money doing this. tie-dye shirt at? Do we have any tie-dye shirts? Hey guys!
Tonight we're gathered here together for some local Tucson entertainment. It's a Tucson thing. And we're giving tonight, you're giving your money to me. Well, you know, not me specifically, but to me kind of in a way. You're giving me all your money. Or just some of it. You don't have to give it all to me. You know, make your house payment, pay the rent, pay the water, and then whatever's left, just give it to me. <coughs> oh, sorry about that. Hey, guys. Thank you for coming to the emergency meeting. I know the mailman is coming any minute, so let's make our intros quick. Thanks for arranging this. It's been hard not going to the dog park anymore. I was making a debt and digging up those bones. I think I'm only a few away from a full body. Now, the women won't leave the house. Yeah, 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 I miss you guys too. I was sitting at the window and I saw so many different things. Birds, lizards, squirrels, Amazon drivers, boy on bike, boy on skateboard. You won't stop laying on the couch watching flashing talking light box. She has been watching flashing talking light box show called Bones. Not what I thought it was going to be about, but I don't hate it. David Boreanaz is a little stilted though. Finally saw old Yeller. He deserved it. Hockey. What? He was an anti-vaxxer. At least Marley was a babe. Girl on bike! Ronald McDonald, Grimace, the ghost of Mr. Muffins! Uh, can somebody mute him? The red sleepy water's gonna wear off on my human any minute now. Old man Jenkins, the lady from the Activia commercials, a Civil War reenactor! Enough of the overshares. I just ate some brownies that smell like a lawn, so I have about 10 minutes left of being useful. Look, the reason I brought you all here is our owners haven't left the house in months. And mine won't stop complaining about dog doosies. Mine keeps saying my feet smell like Fritos, but I think Fritos smell like dog feet. My human has been playing The Last of Us too, and holds me every time she has to shoot a dog. She wasn't this loving when she got my balls chopped off. I am the last of my kind. How can we miss them if they won't leave? I haven't even had the chance to eat through the trash. Chicken bone a la coffee grounds is mwah. I haven't been able to wear her shoes. You mean eat her shoes? No, Allie. Okay then, well, I have a solution. But be cool, bitches. <coughs> Meow. A cat? Excuse me, nine lives matter. I said be cool. I'm paying her by the hour. And it better be fresh catnip. Now what is it that you need, turd tasters? How do we deal with our owners always being home? What do you miss most from before the giant cat in the sky knocked the earth off the kitchen table? Not having to be a good dog all the time? Barking at potential intruders without getting yelled at? I am the king of this household and it is my sworn duty to protect it. I am the ballest man of this house. Licking that itch. I just can't scratch. Poodle tail. Trixie at the dog park wasn't fixed. Ew! Exactly. You miss freedom. The freedom to do whatever you wanted because you didn't have the prying eyes of management looking down at you. We cats have evolved past that. We've been free since we first domesticated the humans. What does that mean? It means we should kill the humans. No. It means be more like a cat. Do you think cats tolerate having our pictures taken at all hours of the day? No. No. We give them only butt shots. Do you think we only eat at mealtime? No. Exactly. We scream and scream and scream until management wakes up and gets our food. Then we pretend we aren't hungry after all. Really? I even take dumps in a box. In the house while making direct eye contact with management. You know what they do? They just clean it up. And we watch. I'm not sure I can do that. I mean... What? 
Why are you afraid of being a bad dog? I claw whatever I want and chase whatever I want. I do whatever I want. Management still keeps me around, even though I'm a bad kitty. So, what do you guys think? We act like cats? Hey guys, sorry I was late. I was watching Paw Patrol. You missed most of the meeting. Rats. I'm not allowed at the computer without parental permission. Did I leave this on? Well, looks like the brownies kicked in. Charlie looks like a dame. Neil Patrick Harris, David Boreanaz, a caravan parade, and a murder. Yup. How many White Claws have I had? Let me tell you a little thing called blessings, okay? Blessings are something that come to you. A blessing just comes unexpectedly. It comes out of the sky and boom, hits you in the face like a blessing. I got another blessing and another blessing. Give us a lot of money. I don't know who's listening. It could be Bill Gates and he could be selling vaccines for 30,000 million trillion dollars. So Bill Gates could be like, hey, I'm gonna give those guys a trillion. The lights and the cameras and the action. That's what we need. Five, we need a trillion. Five or 10 or 15. Okay, five, 10 or 15. Just, I mean, it's kind of weird that the show comes together at all. Like, we we just make this thing from nothing. Like, it's weird producing something from whole cloth. I am super grateful to be a part of Keep Tucson Sketchy. I'm grateful for the friends that I've made there and for the contributions that I've been allowed to have. It's amazing every single time we get to the end of it and we see this final thing that we all put together. It's. It's been incredible to see this thing grow over the past two years and to see us stick through this really tough year, longer than a year. For us, it's worth it. No pandemic is gonna stop us because we love what we do. Ah, oh, those 
keep Tucson sketchy, folks have one great community. I'm so happy that I got to be part of it. Wait, does that mean that I can use this towards community service? Does this count? Okay, well, I got to go talk to my PO, so I got to split. I'm going to go. Thank you so much for watching and donating. But most of all, thank you for being you. Because nobody else can be you except for you. Unless you take like an heroic dose of LSD and... No? Okay. <laughs> all right. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. for y'all <laughs> if you donate <laughs>